what's up guys, DZanex here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Fostex THX100. Now this particular one has the Pteric detachable cable mod, which obviously isn't something that a lot of people would have to worry about, but since I carry these to work often, I like having that detachable cable. It's just really nice feature to have. I know why they didn't add it to the stock version, because it would have added to the cost. And speaking of cost, honestly, these things are a pretty exceptional value for the asking price, which is $3.99 shipped. So the Fostex THX100 is basically a retuning of the Fostex TH600. This is a special edition, uh, limited edition made headphone through the massdrop.com website. The most obvious feature on this edition is the beautiful mahogany wood cups that come on these. Man, these things are super pretty. I mean, that, that's some good looking wood. Polished to perfection, man. Now this particular run came from the first batch from Mass Drop, which was limited to 2000. They did do another run of another 2000 of the mahogany version. There's also two other versions. There's a purple heart wood cupped version and also the newest, which is the ebony wood version, which cost a hundred dollars more. Now, as for the sound differences between the mahogany, purple heart, and the ebony, supposedly there are some slight differences in the sound signature. I don't know, because I haven't heard the other two. But of course, I'm going to tell you how these guys sound in this video in just a bit. As far as the packaging, you're not going to get much. It's just a basic cardboard box. No fluff, you know, no extra big, huge leather boxes or anything like that. It's just plain and simple. The THX100 is a 25 ohm headphone using a dynamic driver. It's made out of a biocellulose, which is literally like a film of bacteria, which they turn into the actual diaphragm. Now, Fostex calls their proprietary drivers Biodyna, but it's still just a biocellulose driver. Look it up sometime. It's really weird. And as I said, this uses the Pteric detachable cable mod. So as you can see, these cables come right out. I gotta give a shout out to my dude Pteric, man. He does some excellent work. I'll put a link to his website in the description. And what he charges is pretty reasonable, especially for the quality of work. I mean, this looks like it came from the factory like that. So the cables on the stock are hardwired into these cups. And being that I do take these to the office a lot and I do travel with them, I really wanted that detachable cable. So I had him do that for me. Now, one thing that I do have to mention about the detachable cable mod, when he puts the plugs in, he's got to drill a slightly larger hole into the wood cups. So what happens is, as he puts these slightly larger plugs into the new hole that he drills in the wood cup, it actually kind of lifts the wood cup off just slightly off of the aluminum cup here. And you can see that now you can kind of see that ring on the mahogany wood that wasn't quite stained as well as this part. So normally this cup is down inside the aluminum a little bit more, so this is less noticeable. But as you can see from the side, really doesn't make much difference, but it is something to note. Also, because the cup is somewhat lifted off of the aluminum, it does leak just a tiny bit more sound. Not much, but it does leak some sound and it also doesn't isolate quite as well. Now in stock form, these things these things aren't super isolating to begin with, so that doesn't really matter. And actually it kind of helps around the office because if somebody's talking to me and I'm jamming out to some tunes, I can hear them talking to me. Now obviously another advantage to having uh, the detachable cable mod is you can, you don't even have to use the stock cable anymore. You can use a really sweet aftermarket cable. Now this is a Norn Audio Skull cable that's made for a Hi-Fi Man Edition X and HE-1000, but they use the same termination. So these guys plug in perfectly right there, just like that. And this is also a balanced cable, so you can use it on your balance amp. It's pretty sweet. Another thing is, these are not the stock pads. These are the stock pads. So these are the ones that come with the headphone. They are slightly angled. I wasn't a big fan of them though. They're kind of thin. They're made out of a sort of a fake egg protein leather. So if you're vegan, you can't use these, but I'm not vegan though. So I went out and I got myself a really nice uh, soft pair of lambskin leather pads. And as you can see, these are much bigger and much deeper than the stock pads. And having this deeper cup 
really helps not only with the comfort, but it also helps with the soundstage greatly. I would say that the soundstage opened up quite a bit with these, with these deeper cups. These don't really cut the mustard in my opinion. I mean, the opening is a little bit smaller and this mesh was constantly rubbing up against my ears. I mean, they do the job, but you can do better. Now, construction wise, they're uh, built pretty well. All the metal parts on the outside here are made out of a magnesium alloy, but they aren't susceptible to chipping and scratching on normal day-to-day -day use, as you can see this little nick on my pair. The adjustable headband uses these metal posts right here, um, and they do open up quite wide, so even people with really big heads can use these without much issue. And I have a medium to small head, and I do have to open it up by one click, and it'll fit me just fine. So you can see that there's plenty of room there for a larger noggin. The headband, I would say, is passable. The padding is, it, it's padded, but it's not padded as well as I would like it to be. You can actually feel right here in the middle, there's a ridge that goes inside between two kind of hard metal bands here. And after a while, right there on the top of your head, it can start to get a little bothersome. So you have to adjust it a little slightly forward, a little slightly back. But I mean, usually I don't have to move them for about maybe an hour and a half to two hours of listening. It's not a deal breaker, but it's worth mentioning. I gotta say though, guys, the highlight of the construction though, obviously these beautiful mahogany wood cups, they're definitely striking. And they're also a conversation piece. I can't tell you how many times people have walked by my desk and looked at them and been like, whoa man, those look sweet. And then it turns into a whole conversation about headphones, which obviously I like. Got these nice galvanized metal rivets here holding the cups in. And you've got your left and your right displayed right here, so you always put them on the right way. You've got the model number right there with the Mass Drop logo. And then on the other side, you've got your serial number. Now I'll take one of these cups off right here. You just twist it, give it one little twist counterclockwise and it comes right out. So you can see that driver right there. This little foam ring comes out. So there's your driver. It's got a 50 millimeter dynamic driver. Now to replace the pads, it's pretty simple. You'll see this little white ring in here that you'll find on the stock cups. It'll be inside here. You just pull this leather back, take out your white ring, and place it in the new pair of pads. And there you go. And then all you do, you see these little teeth right here? And then they, they line up with these teeth right here. So you just push them in, just like that, and give it a nice little turn clockwise. You'll feel it click, and boom, there you go. Brand new pads. The stock cable itself is actually pretty nice. It's fairly long, and it's got this nice cloth covering it. My only issues were, that when these are hardwired into the cups, this part gets really tangled and twisted up. So as you can see, it'll start getting kinked up a bit and you'll always have to be unraveling it. Other than that, it's a pretty solid cable and it's terminated with a nice gold plated quarter inch plug. And this thing feels very solid. It also comes with a black leather pouch to carry them in, but let's just say I misplaced it. So let's talk about how these guys sound. At $3.99 shipped, I would say that these are definitely very competitive in that price point. So anyone who's heard the original Fostex TH600 knows that these guys are definitely bass head headphones. It has like a subwoofer quality to it. You can really feel the bass, but if you're looking for detail, don't expect too much detail on this one. But it is heavy hitting bass and it's fun. If you're a big fan of hip hop, this is your can right here, buddy. Now, if these are improperly amped, that big boomy bass can definitely bleed into some of the mids, but some of you guys that listen to a lot of hip hop and things of that nature, I think you'll enjoy these. The mids are the most obvious improvement from the original TH600. They're pushed way more forward, so you get that nice mid-range that's very noticeable and it's not pushed back into the background too much, which is a good thing because the bass could definitely drown out those mids. At 25 ohms, these things are driven pretty easily. I mean, they can be driven directly out of an iPhone or just a little portable amp. I would suggest if you're using a desktop amp to go solid state though, because I tried these babies on some tube amps. Man, that's a no-go. The bass just becomes a little unruly and kind of bloats out and just gets kind of squishy and you lose a lot of those nice uh, forward mids. So if you're gonna amp these guys, definitely go solid state. Now the box does say premium reference headphones. I don't know if I'd go so far as to call these reference. I mean, I don't know if audio engineers would wanna use these to mix anything, just with that heavy emphasis on the sub bass. 
but the mid-range definitely has a nice lush quality to it. It's a lot richer when compared directly to the TH600. Having that mid-range pushed a little more forward than the TH600 really goes a long way in making these, in my opinion, a slightly better headphone and a much better value. So soundstage on these, really impressive, especially for a closed headphone. It's nice and wide. When properly amped, uh, the detail retrieval is pretty decent. Having those forward mids really helps in that area, so you can pick apart some details. But on really bass-heavy music, that's going to be your main focus. I mean, it's hard to get away from the booming bass on these babies. So treble on these guys is pretty good. I did have some issues at higher volumes. These things do tend to get somewhat tizzy, which after a while at higher volumes could become a little fatiguing. And the treble, while being a little bit rolled off in compared to the TH600, still can get a little tizzy, as I said. In the three to $400 space, as far as headphones, these really do knock it out of the park. They do a lot of things really well, especially if you're a lover of bass quantity. Now this value does, of course, come at a cost. As I said, the cable's not detachable. The stock pads could definitely be better. And the headband could be an issue for some people. The metal frames that aren't super padded could annoy people after a while. For the price range, I would say that these guys are a very good value. The only downside being that these aren't readily available and you can't just run out and buy them right now. You're going to have to wait for another drop from MassDrop.com or you're going to have to find them on the used market. But man, these cups are phenomenal looking. They look even better in person. And the sound, really solid for the price. Just do yourself a favor, man. Get some better ear pads, okay? All right. See you guys. Go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to be dropping even more reviews very soon. Thanks.